This repair video is brought to you by um, Check Engine Light and Code P0441. Uh, this is in 2006 Cayenne, Porsche Cayenne, 3.2 liter VR6. And the 0441 is the vacuum canister purge valve. It is located back there. It's going to be a little bit of a bugger to, uh, I think everything's going to be okay except for unplugging the hoses. Um, symptoms will be, um, depending on how bad the valve is, you'll probably just get a little bit of a chugging when it's cold uh, because it's going to act like a vacuum leak when it's cold, when the valve is remaining open and not closed and it's sucking in all of these fumes that it thinks it needs because it's open um, and you'll get like a vacuum leak. Um, that's what mine is doing anyway and when it warms up it completely goes away until the car is cold again. Um, it never chugs when warm so the valve is doing its thing when it's warm but when it's cold it's sucking the improper amount which I'm assuming is leaving it open it's not closing completely so it's uh, again acting like a vacuum leak. Um, pull your engine cover off it just pops up on all four corners especially if you have two hands to do it god come on you anyway i need two hands to do it if you've got the car you know how this works pop 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 all four corners straight up back and off and then we're gonna have to take this center engine cover piece off or engine compartment cover. It's just these little clips. You turn them uh, about a quarter of a turn and they should pop out and you pull them out. Um, they're pretty simple. I'm gonna try and show you one. They look like this and they've got one little side that grabs into two little metal teeth when you push it in and then you turn it and it locks it in place. So anyway, we're gonna get all that ready and we'll be back in a second. I'll show you the new valve. There's five of these clips all together. I'm putting them in my pocket so I don't lose them. So. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. You can't write this shit. That just, like, really? I, had, I do have extra ones, thank God. Because when I'm at the wrecking yard, I grab crap. It's down there somewhere. If you see it, let me know. Anyway. So there's one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm putting this in my pocket before I lose this one. And then this is just kind of semi pop out. It goes behind this one, the two on the sides. Actually, I'm going to take this side one off too because there's something else I have to make a video on on this side. So I'm going to take this one off. You don't have to. You just have to take the middle one off. But I'm going to take this one off anyway. I'll be back in two seconds. If you're taking the side engine cover off like me on this side, you're going to need a T20 as well for this little screw for the washer fluid bottle. This one's a T20. God knows it could have been changed over the years. Um, but it's a something. It is some sort of screw. Anyway, that's off. And now I can pull this off and this one off. Is our little bugger back there right back in there and of course it's starting to rain because why wouldn't it um okay before i decide whether i'm going to continue on in the rain this is the valve it's an original bosch this one is not the same if you have a v8 or a vr6 or a 3.6 vr6 i don't do not believe they're the same this is the one specifically for the 3.2 part number part number part number did I not just see it? Part number. Okay. Again, this one's not does not cross over with the uh, the V8, and I do not believe it's the same one on the 3.6 liter VR6. Um, anyway, yeah, I can hear the rain coming, so I'm gonna stop this for now and be back. Okay, I'm going to keep going on this in the rain. I don't care. I'm already wet. Um, 
it'll be very hard to show you this, but if you follow this line right here, ignore this one, I made this one myself. This line that goes up into the, sorry, into the intake right here, tees into the intake, you follow that one back, and it goes right into the valve, and beside it, right there, so there's the, the line on the back, right there is the electrical connector, and on the other side is the other line. And that line comes up right here into this. So this is what, this comes down, does a little 180 down here and curls into that. Now, if I can get this rubber mount that it's attached to off, this would all be so much easier. I cannot feel how that's actually attached though. Ooh, sun's coming out. Nice. Can we push it? Through? Let's see if it's, there's like a rubber strap around it holding it in. Let's see if I can push it out of that rubber strap mount. I don't know if you can see in there or not. Anyway, this is the electric the two wire electrical connector right beside that so two wire connector right beside that the one hose opposite side is the other hose which attaches to this one and then this side comes out right along here to right there i replaced this because this was a hundred and well, in Canada, $179 for this plastic hose, and I just used a rubber hose, and uh, yeah, Bob's your uncle works perfectly, works fine. <laughs> $180 or $3 worth of rubber hose. It's just another vacuum line, but it was cracked. They do crack because they're hard plastic. Why a hard plastic hose a foot and a half long is worth $180, I'll never know, and I'll never pay. Anyway, they are simple... Um, uh, just grip clamps. They're the ones that you need to squeeze with a pair of pliers to get them off. And uh, there's no way for me to get you down in there and show you that. So I'm going to get it out and then we'll show you once I'm out. Well, since I was looking through the camera, I didn't notice that this is one of those clips right here. The same as your ignition coils. You stick a flathead under and kind of wiggle it. It'll make a click pop up and then you unhook it. And it started raining again. Ugh back when I unhook this. Okay, so once the electrical connector is finally off, here it is, slid off. There is the clamp for the back, pinch pull, same on the front. And then back here is the rubber ring. You've got to make sure to get that in there so it doesn't flop around. It's just a rubber ring that goes around the entire Body. See how it's smaller this side, it pushes in from this way and uh, holds it in place. So we're going to unhook all those and back in a sec. Okay, old one out, new one in hand. Which one's which? I hope the shiny one's the new one. So, installation, just reverse. Once you've, uh, once you've got that electrical connector, these hoses pull out pretty good. Um, just make sure, like I said, that this hose that goes up to here wraps around back and then comes forward, goes through that rubber ring, uh, that rubber mounting ring. You can't even see it. Oh, yes, you can, actually. Let me put you down in there. No, you can't. Uh, maybe you can. Can you see the hose go through the ring? Let me point. Hose goes through that rubber ring there. That's the most difficult part, I guess. So anyway, yeah, put the back one, the, the clamp on that one that goes first, and then uh, ready, set, Bob's your uncle. So we're going to put all this stuff back together and then um, start it and erase our code and check, well, check for codes. Okay, so the new one is in and done. Um, not that terribly tough um, getting it. Releasing it from those that rubber ring was the biggest pain in the butt. Make sure to put all your connectors and your rubber holders and hoses and clips and snips and whatever back. Because the 
factory put them there to confuse you and you don't want to lose that confusion it makes you what you are what the hell does that connect to oh. does it really it holds on to itself on the other side oh, that's a little weird <laughs> shit more rain um anyway uh, that's it. Back in a, I'm, I'm going to start it up and we'll uh, erase the code once I get everything cleaned up here. Okay, so we're just going to do a scan. I didn't uh, make you have to sit through it loading all of the uh, parameters and stuff. Um, -da -da -da. Read fault codes. P0441. Let's go back. Clear. Oh, sorry. By the way, this is a, um, a <coughs> excuse me, a Mukar CDE 900. Um, these are not expensive at all, and this does an awful lot that it actually shouldn't, uh, for its price, be able to do. Um, check my video on the. Uh, the review on it i don't make any money off of these they gave me this one to uh, and i've been using it ever since i've been using it as opposed to all the other code scanners i've got because it just freaking works um works beautifully um anyway let read fault codes again well it shouldn't be there because so let's start the car now gonna have to figure out that there's a new one in there it's gonna take a second for the idle to clear but it used to do a little blub, 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 for about 30 seconds when it was cold only when it was dead cold and hadn't been run so you can see it hasn't been run and it's perfectly smooth right now I think we're good anyway time will tell but uh, if you need your um, vacuum vent actuator um, or your charcoal actuator that's how you replace it thanks for watching uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff thank you very much